Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. Uh, in this episode today, it is our first ever, I'm going to call it, emergency pod. Um, we've never done one of these before, but with the news of Hector Hex Rodriguez allegedly reacquiring Optic Gaming, um, allegedly is a very loose term. It basically is confirmed that it happened, but since it hasn't technically been confirmed by him or the league or anything, we say allegedly. Um, but apparently he reacquired Optic Gaming, so we need to have an emergency pod. Uh, basically, my idea of this is like, I listen to like a lot of obviously esports podcasts, but then outside of esports, I listen to a lot of sports um, podcasts as well. I'm a big Colts fan, and like whenever Colts news goes down in the NFL, um, there's like a Stampede Blue podcast and a couple other podcasts to do like emergency news podcasts, uh, where basically like if big news goes down, they have like a quick podcast to talk about it. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here. Um, and then there's also like a couple other pieces of news uh, that we can touch on. Um, because some things have happened in the CDL over the last few days when I haven't been able to record a, a podcast at all, but some things have happened, so we're going to talk about all of them. Um, if you enjoy this emergency pod and want to see more of them when like random news drops, um, I'm super busy with school, so it's tough for me to go outside of my schedule of like the weekly podcast, but if some big news drops, I can always try to get some kind of like emergency pod out and stuff, uh, especially when it's huge news like this that is such a a shockwave effect on the rest of the CDL. Uh, but if you enjoy this one, be sure to let me know. Uh, and if you enjoy the content, we do all kinds of content like this. So be sure to leave a like, comment, your thoughts on this video. Um, and then subscribe as well for more CDL content if you enjoy. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, and before we get into the Hector news, obviously that's the big headliner. It's going uh, to be what a majority of this shorter podcast, I think. I mean, I always say that, but it might end up getting long. Um, we'll probably be about. But there's some other quick news to touch on before we really get into my thoughts on Hector and like the bulk of um, this emergency pod, but quickly, um, it was announced, um, a few hours ago as I'm recording this, that TJ is officially back with optic. This was pretty much a given, but it wasn't official yet. Um, this is obviously a good move. I don't think anybody would argue that he's a great player in four V four. Um, he played a little bit in AW before the age restriction came in. He was very good in that game. Then obviously his first full year competing, um, once he was of age was on world war two and he won two or three championships on that game. And he was considered one of the best SMGs throughout the year. Um, great player in 4v4, one of the most talented S&D players out there. Um, I mean, any roster with him, Slasher, and Kenny is going to be a top squad um, and be a contender in any year, um, especially if we see Temp join this team. Um, it seems like Temp joining this team is the most likely thing to happen. I mean, if worse comes to worse and they literally can't sign anybody, um, I feel like um, Draza isn't the worst fourth option in the world. They could still be pretty good, um, but it seems like the reason that they weren't signing anybody so fast is probably because of this whole Hector thing going down is I don't know how, how the contracts were working. If they didn't know who was going to be the owner, maybe they wanted to wait, um, to see if the new owners wanted to pick somebody up. I don't know how long this talks have been going on. Maybe it's been going on for months and stuff. Um, but you never know. So maybe that's what the, the delay was, but I actually wouldn't mind seeing like a couple other sleeper players on this team. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing like uh slacked or classic or especially enable if, uh, Nate shot buys in it's a hundred T team enable back on hundred T um, people who hear that probably think like wow temp stats are so much better he's so much more of a talented player uh, than those three how would you want them over temp um, but especially in 4v4 there is so much more to cod than stats I mean temp is obviously a super talented player and if he's on this roster I think it'll work um, he has the most raw talent of those four players uh, I listed but I think classic slacked or even enable, they can all play a sub or a flex, just like temp can, you can play a sub or a flex. Um, and then they do bring more leadership than temp, all three of them. And they also have a history. I mean, classic has team a slasher in the past slacked. I mean, he's just a veteran player. He'll work with anybody, I think. And then enables obviously team with slasher and Kenny in the past. Um, I think they bring like more leadership history of team with these players. And if they can't get temp, I'd love to see one of them on the squad, but obviously if they get temp as well, um, that would work out but if nade shot is buying um buying the spot i would be interested maybe that's the delay on why they can't get temp that's just a that is a complete speculation for me that could be just completely unfounded and untrue but if nade shot is buying the spot maybe he's been delaying the signing of temp because they've had a lot of beef in the past temp was basically calling nade shot trash and like he got carried by his three teammates and he was just a trash cod player then nade shot basically was like well I mean, until you have nine chips or even get your first one come back at me. I mean, this was a couple years ago, but the relationship might be not so great there. So if Nate Shot's coming to the league, I don't really know that he'd want to give Temp a contract because I don't know if they've ever medded that. Um, but Nate Shot seemed actually like pretty upset with him off the beef and they don't seem to get along very well. So if Nate Shot is buying this spot in 100T, I don't know if Temp's going to get that roster spot. So watch out. This could be a, a spot that flip-flops from what CDL Intel's been saying. And that's pure speculation by me. Um, 
And then also to move on from that, we just saw yesterday that Frosty is headed back to Halo. Um, he seemed to be kind of hinting at it all year. He was like playing Halo 5 um, after scrims like on stream like almost every day. And honestly, if he's happy with the move, I'm super happy for him. I originally kind of come from the Halo scene. It's like my gaming roots, which it seems like so many people in the COD scene, their roots are in Halo. Um, so I always kind of have extra love for the Halo guys, kind of like Shotzi. Always was like rooting for him on the side a little bit. Um, even though I'm not the biggest Empire fan, I was always like, I hope Shotzi does well. He's from Halo. Um, Hook, I've always been a huge fan of Hook. Um, formal obviously uh, frosty was one of those guys uh, even enable guys like that um, I've just always kind of liked the halo guys um, just because I come from that scene so it's kind of cool for me to see halo guys be successful um, and then he obviously I mean for any of you that know anything about halo he joins like the most legendary roster um, back with them easily the best roster for halo infinite I'm assuming um, so I'm excited to see him win some more in halo I mean however if halo infinite does flop um, I don't think this will be the last um, of Frosty in COD. I feel like at any point, if he wants to come back to COD, he'll have a roster spot. It might not be on like a top team, but I feel like he can at least get himself back in the league, especially if he runs it up in Halo for like two years uh, and then comes back in the COD leagues at 20 teams, four people apiece. I mean, 80, 80 spots. I feel like if Frosty really wants a spot, he can get one of the 80. I mean, he can at least get on the 20th best team in the league. Um, that won't be too hard for him, I don't think. So I think this might not be the last of him in COD if the next Halo game isn't too good. But if he is done in COD, uh, he had a pretty good career for those like two years. Um, he had a pretty good run at Champs. Oh no, he didn't play for E6. He went to Midnight. Uh, he was a pretty good player in BO4 though overall. Um, and had some decent runs with E6 during the year. Uh, and then obviously won like three online, albeit championships of Florida, but was good this year for Florida. Um, so he had a pretty good run in COD. But I'm hoping he runs it up in Halo. Um, Kind of weird, he didn't have very many good words uh, for Florida on the way out. He kind of basically said, screw you to them. I don't want to use the word he used on here. Um, uh, but he kind of just basically said, screw you to Florida. He doesn't really he doesn't really like them too much. So I'm interested to hear about that. I haven't really heard any negatives on them as an org. It seemed like Pristini really was thankful for them when he left. Um, but I'll be interested to see if that develops at all. And uh, kind of Florida is one of those negative orgs, uh, along with the reputation that like Ultra and Paris have right now. Um, that's going to do it for the other news. We're going to get into kind of like the meat of what this emergency pod is for. It is to talk about, um, the hex news, obviously. Um, so apparently if you haven't heard, I don't know how you haven't heard. Um, but hex has bought the IP for optic gaming back, including the CDL spot for OGLA. Um, obviously he'll have to flip that spot, uh, and sell it to someone, um, because it's an extreme conflict of interest to own two teams in a, in a sports league. That'd be like, if you own two NFL teams, you could, let's say like you own the Packers and the bears, you could just take every good asset the bears have and just give it to the Packers and have like the bears be like your farm team uh, for the Packers. That obviously is an extreme conflict of interest and, um, completely destroys league integrity. So he can't, um, can't own both teams in the league so unless he's doing something crazy and he's just going to go over to ogla and leave nrg or something um which i don't think he's going to do he's not going to leave hitch and all those guys behind at nrg and like big t and all them uh so i'm assuming he's just going to flip that spot to somebody um but obviously he'll keep all the rights to the optic gaming name logo brand all that um my guess is chicago will probably rebrand to be like the chicago optic i don't know if that's going to be their exact name or how that works with the whole optic gaming um like it's weird there's like loopholes how phase got their name to be atlanta phase and stuff but i'm assuming they'll be like chicago optic or something because there's no chance that hector buys optic back the brand he built up from scratch the brand he i mean his whole life is associated with it there's no way he just bought optic back just to flip it back to somebody else and let him call it optic the only possible way that ever happens is if somehow he's like letting nade shot use the name but he's he's not gonna do that once he has optic back in his hands he's never letting it go i don't believe that um but the most interesting part of this personally to me is who the heck he sells that roster spot to because obviously he's got optic back in his name that's awesome he's probably going to use that um for all for his uh chicago spot he's probably going to switch the logo huntsman or a one-year thing i'm thinking um but the rumors of who hector could sell the the ogla spot to um they say it could be like rise nation um so any of you who follow cod you know them they've been in the scene a lot in the past um obviously nate shot and 100 thieves or even like dr disrespect i heard apparently he's been interested and talked about a long time wanting to get into the cdl um but i don't know if they're the team or like group of people that's going to get this team but i would assume that 100 thieves gets the first crack at it uh since hex and nate shot are so close um nate shot is so synonymous with call of duty he's kind of like the first gamer to blow up off um any game and it was in call of duty and he's like been the face of call of duty along with scump for how long now even though he's been out of the scene for so long he's still like one of the most talked about players 
Um, he's done so much since he's left COD and stuff. Obviously, 100 Thieves is blown up. Um, his YouTube channel blew up even more after he left COD. Um, dude's just, I mean, he's, he's out, he outgrew the COD scene, but he still loves it. Um, I think he wants to get back one day. Um, so I'd assume he gets the first shot at it. Also, since him and Hector are so close, they're best friends. Um, and the league would obviously really want to have Nade shot in. It would bring a lot of popularity, but Nade did say on stream, it isn't too realistic based on the finances and stuff. They don't know if they can justify paying that much to get into the league with the possible, um, no return on investment, I guess the way you could say it. Although I feel like they're a team that would make a lot off merchandise sales and stuff. So they might be able to be one of the few teams that could, um, get an early return on investment. Cause this is probably more of a long-term investment. If you get in the CDL, you're probably not going to make a ton of money now, but they're hoping that the league can blow up and become like a, as big as like an NBA one day. And then that's where you're going to make your money and stuff. Um, but Nate, you know, over the last few days, he's kind of posted some bait type of stuff. He posted like a thing on Instagram that said like, back to back and it was like him holding the two trophies that 100 thieves won in bo4 and like slasher put some pictures of him and his 100 t jersey winning championships i think octane did some bait and stuff obviously we know octane won't be on the team uh because he's in seattle but if this stuff is probably all bait but i hope it's not because i mean 100 thieves in the cod league nade shot uh, a rivalry with optic again that would just be if hector having optic again then 100 thieves being like the san diego thieves or the la thieves or something um that rivalry of nade shot and hector back it would be so good for the league um and if doc uh doc dr disrespect if he buys the team um people are saying they could be moved to like san diego because i don't know how that works if somebody buys the spot that was formerly like ogla spot are they required to keep the team in la could they move them to san diego could they move them to like washington dc uh if they wanted to i don't know how that works uh but a lot of people are saying they could be moved to san diego and be called like the san diego speed or something uh and obviously if doc uh, is getting into the cdl at any point that'd be very good for the league he has such a massive following uh, he probably brings so many new people that don't even know about the CDL um, to at least give it a try and watch it. And then some of them will probably stay uh, just because they're Doc fans and want to cheer for his team. Um, so at, at some point, obviously, it's not going to happen this year that they're both in unless like Shocker out of nowhere, Paris sells their team and then we get 100 Thieves and Doc in, which would be the biggest W ever for the league. Um, but I hope at some point when the league expands, both Doc and Hunter T get in because Doc would bring a ton of fans and Nate Shot and Hunter T would bring a ton of fans and it would just be so good for the league. I, I can't imagine a scenario where that's ever bad for the league to have Doc and Nate Shot associated with it. Um, but back to Hunter T a little bit. Like I said, can't think of a better scenario for the league if they get the spot. Um, the league only um, not only gets rid of OGLA as a team who pretty much most people hated because most fans are... Even if it's not like your number one team, everybody kind of likes Hector um, and what he built with Optic because he built basically built the Call of Duty scene for all of us fans. Um, so not only gets rid of a team that is pretty hated because a lot of people saw them as like the fake Optic or whatever you want to call it, but now Hex has Optic back, so that that's just a rallying point for so many fans, and maybe it gets more fans interested again now that Optic is like the favorite team. Maybe some people that kind of stop watching because Optic wasn't the love anymore. Maybe they come back. Um, not only this, but Nade shot the face of COD with Scum for so long is back in the league. Um, instantly becoming the second most popular team in the league. They would be um, behind Chicago Huntsman, Chicago Optic, whatever they're going to be now. Um, this would just be such a W and such a jump start for the league after a tough year. I mean, last year we got hit with COVID forcing us to have online events and then the atrocious um, abomination of a competitive Call of Duty that Modern Warfare was um, with no developer support or anything. So, I mean, coming on to a Treyarch game where they seem to be wanting to support competitive, uh, I'm really hoping it's good because every Black Ops game has been good. So I'm just, I'm praying it's good. Um, and then having this new influx of fans would just be such a W start uh, for the for the league. A good jump start after a tough year one um, with most of it, which was uncontrollable. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like the people that they're thinking of selling to in the news I've heard. But now I just kind of want to talk about like a little bit more on my thoughts because I didn't really get into it too much earlier about like what Optic being back in Hector's fans or in Hector's hands means um, for like the scene, for fans and for me personally and probably so many other fans personally. I mean, even if you're not, like, I don't consider myself, like, a huge, um, like, Optic fan or Huntsman fan, you want to consider it. I do like them. I enjoy watching them. I think it's cool how a team in Call of Duty uh, and really a team in esports in general has able has been able to have, like, such a huge fan base, like, a sports fan base, because that's something that, like, 20 years ago you probably didn't think was possible. Like, people would all rally together and love a video game team like they would like a football team it just didn't seem possible um so what he's been able to build like that is super cool to me but not only that like 
even if you're not a fan of optic, I'm going to call him optic. Just when I'm saying optic, I'm talking about like Hector's Hector's optic that he's built over the last how many years, even if you're not a fan of them now and like you were an E United fan at the end, or now you're an empire fan, or you're a Florida fan, or you're a fan of any team. I'm willing to bet that at least a pretty good portion of the reason why you watch COD is because you probably started by like f discovering optic or like seeing optic play at an event or seeing scump or seeing nade shot. Um, or like phase and that kind of turned you into um, watching optic and phase and they're like they're like at least some part of the reason why you're into competitive call of duty even if you're not a fan of them anymore or maybe you loved you like discovered like a crim6 youtube video back in the day and you loved crim6 and then he had the rivalry with ache so you kind of thought you hated optic at the time but they were part of the reason that you were so entertained is because they were the villains to you in your storyline if you were a big complexity fan back in the day optic was kind of one of the villains you kind of hated nade shot because you were a big aches fan or something they were the villain in your story so I mean, just like to so many Optic fans, how they think they hate complexity from back in the day, uh, or they think they hate AW phase. It was, I mean, you think you hate them, but really in somewhere in there, uh, you kind of love them in a way because it was, they offered so many entertaining games for you. Just kind of like how, I, kinda, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Kind of like how, like in sports, like rest in peace, Kobe, but like when Kobe was there, so many Celtics fans, I mean, Lakers, Celtics, that bitter rivalry. And same with like Magic and Larry, all the Celtics fans thought they hated Magic Johnson and hated Kobe. But then after they all retired and everything and everything's done, it's like, you know what? We hated him on the court, but man, it was like, it was awesome to watch him battle with our team because the battles were just so good. Um, so it's kind of like that with those rivalry teams. But anyways, like I remember, I've, I think I told this story on like the first podcast and I was explaining how I got into COD. Like one day, way back in the day, I was in like late elementary school or middle school or something. I was homesick from school. And I was like, I'm gonna watch some YouTube. I had like at that point, I watched like Key and Peel, like funny skits and stuff. Um, but I hadn't really watched like much else on YouTube. But I, I like I played Call of Duty, I played Halo here and then all of a sudden, like in my recommended videos on YouTube, I don't even know how it got up there, but it was like COD Champs Final BO2 or something. Um, and I watched it and it was like uh Farico Impact versus Envy, and I was like, this is pretty cool. Like I didn't even know competitive COD was a thing. Uh and then like I watched that final and it was like however long it was like freaking 11 maps or something so it took forever and then all of a sudden i'm like hmm this is interesting so i looked up like competitive cod or like call of duty championships because that was what this tournament was called that i watched from bo2 uh, and then like the ghost one came up and i watched like it was like optic versus eg i think and like losers i don't know and like winners final or something i think it was when they played in that sovereign dom and or whatever it was when Nate shot and Bose went horrible in that second half and they actually maybe had a chance to beat EG like the best team ever um and I was like wow this optic team has a lot of fans like people were screaming for them people love them so then I was like let's look up optic and I watched like a bunch of Hector's videos and a, like a bunch of the optic house videos and like uh a bunch of like uh a bunch of Nate shot videos a bunch of I mean everything everybody in optic and I was like wow this team's really cool so like being a young fan, obviously, then I was instantly like a fan of Optic. I was a big fan of Optic. And then as I started to learn more about the league, I kind of just became a fan of the league and I like cheered for players I liked and stuff. But like, I feel like Optic's really the team that brought me in. And I think it's a team that brought you like brought so many people in. And then it kind of made me want to get into like the business of esports. I kind of, whether that's in content creation, I didn't think, I mean, I got in way too late to ever develop myself as like a player. I mean, that would obviously be the dream. I think any of us would love to be a player or something. But then I was like, maybe I can get in the business side. I could be like a, an agent or something. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm going to school and studying like a lot of law and stuff. So I was like, maybe I could get in on like the legal side of things or, uh, or game design or something and like that kind of opened up like a possible career path for me. So I think that's, I mean, I feel like optic, whether you're a fan of them now, they in some way kind of helped you get into the scene or love the scene or be a part of the community. Uh, so that being back in Hector's hands just feels so right. It felt weird this year for optic to not be even if they aren't the most popular team, it felt weird for them to be hated because for so long, by most fans, they had been loved. So to have that name back in Hex's hands, I mean, I think it's just awesome. I mean, as like a businessman too, uh, for a while, I looked at the Hex because like, I mean, before franchising was even thought of and like AW, I was like, you know how cool it would be for my job to be like an org owner? Like I get to fund a team to play in COD tournaments or league tournaments or whatever. And like, that's my job to be an owner, just like a sports owner. Like that'd be so cool. Uh, and then back in CDL, Minnesota, I was just, God, I was walking by the side on those big bars. Um, I was going to go get a drink, and then all of a sudden, I'm, I, like, walk up to the counter. Somebody walks around the corner, and it's Hex, and I was wearing, uh, like, a scump sweatshirt or something like that, and he saw my sweatshirt, and he's like, hey, nice sweatshirt, and I, like, didn't notice who it was. I, like, turned around, and it's, I mean, it's Hex standing right there, and I was like, wow, uh, this is somebody I've looked up to for a while, you know, like, not really, like, 
for anything else besides like as a businessman, I, I love the model he built. And I was like, I mean, this is somebody that's had a huge impact on my life. And I got to talk business with him because we were kind of like over in like the corner next to the stage where people didn't like notice him because anytime he walks out in there, he's gets, he gets flooded for pictures. So I got to talk like business with him a little bit just for like two minutes. He probably doesn't even remember the conversation. Um, but to me, it was just cool to like meet somebody that's like one of your business idols, somebody that you look up to and you'd like to do something like that one day. Uh, it was just cool to meet him. He was a really down to earth guy. So I know how much the brand means to him. Obviously, if you build something in any industry um, for 10 plus years and you put your blood, sweat and tears into it, you're obviously going to be heartbroken if you lose that thing one day. Uh, and I think he obviously was heartbroken when he lost it um, and lost control of it. But now he's got control back. Uh, so I think I'm really happy for him. I'm happy for the scene because I think Optic being in Hector's hands is only good for the scene. Because even if you hate Optic and you're like, oh, I wish you went to God, I don't know why you'd say that. But if Hex, uh, if Hex has Optic back and he grows his team, um, it's only better for like the least follow team, like Paris. If the league's doing better, even if Paris sucks, the league doing better for is better for Paris, no matter how good they are. So I think it's cool that it's back in his hands. Um, I just think it is such a synonymous name with Call of Duty, the Optic brand, and seeing it at such a low point where nobody really liked it was kind of really horrible. It felt like it was a brand that had been built for 12 years for so long just to be driven into the dirt and then everybody hating it. Didn't feel like the right the right way for it to go out. So I'm super glad that Hex was able to get the brand back. I really hope he rebrands Chicago to Optic because it would just feel right to have Optic back in the league uh, in Hector's hands. Um, so yeah, that's kind of overall my thoughts on this. Obviously, that was kind of a long ramble, but I feel like it's something that deserves to be talked about by anybody. I mean, I'm sure so many of you have stories about how you got into the COD scene and probably one of the first things you watch was Optic videos. Uh, so that's about all I wanted to say in the situation, I think. Comment down below what you guys think. I mean, was Optic one of the first things you watched? How did Hector help you get into the scene? Or like, has Optic been a big part of your life? Or maybe you were one of those complexity fans back in the day. Um, they were obviously a lot more rare because Optic has always had the biggest fan base. But maybe you were one of those complexity fans that was like, it is kind of cool to see Optic back in Hector's hands. Because now if Aches gets back in the league, we kind of have whatever team he's on versus Optic again. He can kind of beat up on them again because that's kind of Aches' thing. Um yeah i mean comment down below your thoughts on the situation uh do you think it's uh like do you think it's really cool it's back in his hands what do you think is going to happen do you think hunter these is going to buy a spot is doc is rise nation is some other random investor going to come through and buy it um but tell me what you thought about this emergency pod too uh something new that i'd like to do when like big news like this drops obviously this is some of the biggest news we've had uh in the time that i've been doing the podcast along with like roster news so yeah Please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Comment down below your thoughts on this. If you have any other random questions, your thoughts on the rosters I talked about uh, earlier in the video and stuff. Um, and then sub if you did enjoy. I post a lot of CDL content, a lot of podcasts like this. Uh, in the off season, we do kind of random roster mania videos or random throwback COD kind of videos. Um, all podcast stuff though, because uh, that's kind of my passion, just talking COD and stuff. So if you did enjoy this, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, like I said. Um, and yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I'll probably see you guys either in a few days or like next week with another pod or something discussing. Hopefully, finally, every roster will be announced so I can discuss all 12 and what they're looking like. But yeah, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this special emergency pod here on the CDL podcast. Um, yeah, that's going to do it. I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, everyone.